Hello, this is Steve speaking to YouTube. Welcome to another CAE video. This time we're on writing part two, writing a review with Forrest McNeil. Well, not with Forrest McNeil, but that's a, a great show that I strongly recommend if you want to get some ideas for reviews. What we'll do in this video, though, is not to watch a comedy show, unfortunately. It is to think about uh, how to write a review. This means we'll look at model answers, I'll give you some activities, and I'll give you lots of phrases to use, and then I'll give you some homework that you have to do to write your own review. Let's go. So this is what you'll see when you get into the exam. It's saying something like, we want a review on something. This one is an album that has made an impression on you. And then it says, write about the album. More or less is read the question carefully, but it's a bit more simple in the review that is going to be write about something and write a review of it. It won't just say review the book or film or album. It will be a bit more specific, like a book that deals with an issue close to your heart, a film that cheers you up, an album that you can listen to on a long journey. But the basic idea is it's still very open. You know, all of these things, it's just really, it's just saying a book that means something, something that you've got an opinion on. So there's a lot of room for manoeuvre and you can choose, you can choose almost any book. You know, the, um, what was the exam that I did the other day with a student? It was like, a, it was a film that, I think it was a film that cheers you up and she chose Fight Club. But she explained it very well, why it cheers her up, because of the criticism of modern society in the film which cheers her up, it fits. So what I'm saying is really you can choose a lot of things and as long as you argue it well and your review makes sense, it's okay. You don't need to worry about having not listened to any albums because you don't like music and so on. Right, let's get into this then. How is a review different? We're going to start with a sample answer. This is from an old Cambridge book. You know it's old because Paolo Nettini was from when I was a teenager. What makes this a review? Thinking of, you know, now we're getting a bit analytical. You are a writer and a reader. What makes this a review? What key features would we see in it? Well, for this one, I'll tell you. Then in a minute, you can start identifying and using these features yourself. Well, we're starting with a catchy but clear title. The soundtrack to my summer. Oh, that's interesting. What's the soundtrack to your summer? I like the idea of, I want to find out about a soundtrack to a summer. I want to have a fun summer. But we still say the name of the album, so it's quite clear what we're talking about. We address the reader directly. We use a lot more second person than in all the other types of writing. And we can see straight away, if you don't know, you should get hold of it. So second person, direct address to the reader, very good. We use rhetorical questions because we're trying to make it interesting. What's distinctive about his voice? Oh, he's got a distinctive voice, has he? I want to know why. Is my voice distinctive? I don't know. But it makes you want to read what's happening and that's the point of a review. We use some, similarly, we use some compelling or more interesting adjectives. Be ambitious, a husky voice, a pleasant tinge of accent in his voice. So you can try and sell it with a bit of interest in your word choice. Not just adjectives, but word choice in general. Be a bit more descriptive. You know, make it a bit more interesting, basically. It's going to be a mix of opinion and fact, because a review is your opinion, but it's still based on facts. If you don't know, you make up the facts. If you, you, know, you No one's really going to check the, the when the film was made or these kind of things. As long as it's not horribly wrong, I think, then it might be a bit strange. But if you're not sure, just make it up. But we can see he comes from Glasgow. Great. His music makes you want to dance and it's some is slow and more thoughtful. That's an opinion. So we mix up opinions and facts. And of course, in a review, you have a recommendation. The recommendation is not just, I recommend this album. I recommend this book. No, you try and be a bit more specific. So here, they've sort of cheated here by saying, I recommend it for everyone. But at least they're saying teenagers, parents, grandparents. There, It's a bit more specific, men and women. Is there anyone who doesn't like Paolo Nettini? Non-binary children? I don't know. It's not clear. But everyone likes it. Okay. So it's a specific recommendation, not just please read this book. So these are the features that I think make, make a review. There, as you can see, there's really there's a lot more examples in this text, but I've just picked out clear ones. Now it's your job. This is another review. This one happens to be about music again. You know, they're not always about music, but this one is. Can you find them? So those six features that I mentioned, I'll put this text in the description as always, if it's easier for people to copy and paste it into their own notes. 
or for a teacher to hand it out and so on. But highlight with these colors or underline or circle or whatever, the features are of a review. Three, two, one, finished. And that's what I found. Obviously the title comes first, music of my homeland. Oh, what's your homeland? What? How can music be some kind of traditional? I didn't know that was Chinese tradition. We talk about you, we talk about you, we use imperative, don't be put off. We start with a rhetorical question, did you know? We've got plenty of interesting writing with Chinese farmers in the rice fields, astonishing sounds, idyllic, never ending. It's clearly someone who's thought about the adjectives and the descriptions they're using. We've got some facts and lots of opinion, but enough facts that we can understand what is happening with these two songs. And then we've got a nice recommendation for anyone who wants to learn about Chinese culture, you can listen to this song. So this one fits it very, very nicely. It's a, it's a good review. What was the task for this review? Because I, obviously I said it's not just review some music. Take a second to read it. I mean, you've already read it, looking for the features. But what do you think the question was? Really, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't found it. I found this from another teacher. But I, and I don't want to talk to him and ask him. I suspect that it was something about two different songs because we've got quite a lot of mention of modern pop music with Little Red Apple, the song that all the kids are listening to. Little Red Apple, Little Red Apple. But then we've also got The River, the traditional music. So I suspect it's some kind of compare, contrast, different types of songs. This comes across very well in the review. It's, it's a very good sign that I can read this review and guess what the question was, because it shows that you have really gone into detail on the relevant content points for the question. Criterion A, you're doing well. So this is a good review. What does this mean in general then, summing up this idea about how to write a review, what makes it a review? Well, let's go through the criteria as always. And I would say content, this means a mix of opinion in facts with good detail about the thing you're reviewing. So if it's a film, you talk about the setting, the plot, the characters, the actors, and so on. If it's a book, similar, twist, these kind of things, dialogue, whatever you want to talk about, relevant points in detail, some basic facts, and then your opinion developed, explained, justified, and so on. Communication, it's all about making it compelling. As always, it's they, they give it to you in the question. It's like, we want to publish reviews on our website. We will publish the most interesting ones. You have to make it interesting. They want clicks on their website. They want those advert clicks, don't they? So you've got to make it interesting. So people read it, so people keep reading it. The people's attention is a very precious thing. Don't give it away, try and keep it. And in terms of organization, well, this one's a bit more simple. Paragraphing, logical conclusion. Introduction, trying to catch that attention, then keeping that attention in the body, which is going to have some details, and then the conclusion, which is normally a recommendation. That's the easiest way of doing it. And in terms of language, this is the same in all your writing. Be ambitious and be specific. If you're writing about music, from the example we saw, a ballad, as in a slow love song, a tune, another word for a song, and husky voice, a, a husky voice to that was not very husky, but you get the idea. It's like a, a deep, broken voice and a type of dog that I've got. But here we're talking about the voice. So that's your summing up of keeping this in mind when you're writing a review. Here's a sample task. I'm showing you the sample task first because in a minute I'm going to show you lots of useful phrases and I want you to be thinking about how to use these phrases for this task. So I'm going to show you the phrases, but don't just copy them. You need to adapt them. You need to make them your own. You need to use them. You need to change them so they fit because this is how you're going to learn them, how you're going to remember them, how you're going to be able to use them yourself. So the task is Christmas is almost here in the middle of August. It's 44 degrees outside. Let's think about Christmas. We are looking for reviews about the most Christmassy and magical place you have ever visited. What's special about it? How do you get there? Who would enjoy it? So as always, they want an interesting review about a magical Christmassy place. Don't forget to make it entertaining. That's your task. In a second, we'll go into a bit more detail about how to approach this task. But for now, just keep this in mind. Think of a place you're going to review, some magical Christmassy or holiday place if you don't celebrate Christmas. 
I wish I didn't have to, but we do in our culture. So you call it a holiday place. But you're thinking of a magical place you went in the holidays. Now you're going to write a review using these kind of ideas and expressions. So for your opening paragraph, I say option one is your rhetorical question. Maybe a rhetorical question. And I'll give you some examples. What would you say if I told you that you could join the army at 75 and get a perfect new body? Oh, I just read this book last month and I was gripped. It was a very fun book, Old Man's War, in which that's the point of the book. When you get to 75, you can join the army to go and fight aliens and they give you a new body. And it was a, a fun book. Before Sunset, a great film. Did you know that it was shot only in the golden hour to achieve that perfect setting sun lighting? That's the second in the, the series, isn't it? The one where they're in Paris. Great film. And only shooting it like an hour every day to get that film. Crazy. And of course, why are all your cool friends listening to 100 Gex? You want to know. I, I like, I'm cool. I want to listen to this 100 Gex, whoever they are. Well, you're going to explain their fantastic albums, 1,000, 10,000 Gex, that you should listen to and why you should listen to them. So starting with a rhetorical question is a great option. Other great option is starting with something a bit personal, trying to make it more interesting. So again, a review can be more personal. You can talk about a book that changed your life, a band that helped you through some dark times, or a film that inspired you to do something, to study something, to follow some kind of career. So you're making it more interesting by giving it a personal touch, because we all love some personal gossip and we all love a good story like that. So those, I'd say, are the best two options for your opening paragraph. Can you apply this, one of these, to the place that you visited, a magical Christmassy place, or to some other review that you want to write if you want to write some other review. Other samples of opening expressions in case you want to use them. Seldom do I find the time to visit a magical Christmassy place. However, when I do take time, I like nothing more than going to New York. It's not a very good example. This is slightly better for a book, a film, or an album or something. Same here, being a bit of a, and then some nice vocab, talking about something that is making you itch to try and do it. You're itching to do something, you really want to do it. Or having never done something, I approached it with a sense of trepidation, but my fears were allayed, meaning it turned out okay. My fears were put aside, were put down. So there's lots of nice phrases there for starting your idea. Then we get into the body, which is where we need to talk about the details of the thing. And if we're describing something, we can talk about where it's set, the story it tells, giving opinions. This one we can use for our Christmassy place, a criticism, a pleasantly surprised by. This is a nice collocation that often goes together, something that you didn't expect, but I was pleasantly surprised by it. Somewhat disappointed with, talk about the more negative aspects, nice. And it was great or fantastic from start to finish, meaning consistently very good. Explaining plots, stories, it revolves around, it focuses on, talk about the twist, it begins with, it reaches a climax when. As always, try to avoid spoilers in reviews, obviously, but you can say, you can mention that the plot has a twist, that there is a dramatic climax when, uh, when they meet without saying what happens when they meet. And then again, evaluating it, similar to giving an opinion, but you can talk about the star-studded cast or the mediocre cast of actors, the plot being gripping, engrossing, all these kind of words, the script being witty, and then being how was it written, sensitively, beautifully written for music, books, films, I think that applies to all of them. They're all written, they're all planned. So that's your body. And what I've included now is some killer lines that I'd recommend including in any review. So this, these all definitely work for the Christmassy place. Were I to sum up the Christmas market in one word, it would be, mm. it left a lot to be desired to say it's not so good. It lives up to the hype, meaning it lives up to the expectations, is by far and away the best, not just good, by far and away the best to show degrees of uh, quality. It raises the bar, meaning it sets a new standard. It sets the benchmark for other things. If you have to say other what, meaning it sets the mark that is the quality standard. Others will be judged against it. It ticks all the right boxes. It holds up well in comparison with the book or with something else that's similar, meaning it's, it's comparatively good. Or it comes off badly in comparison. You don't always have to be positive. 
So what you do is you clearly plan a point for each paragraph. So we mentioned I'm going to talk about the, you know, the, it could be the food you ate at this magical Christmassy place and the activity you did there, the presents you got there, something like that. You got your ideas, clearly plan it and then link all these ideas together with your neutral cohesive devices or linkers, which some, a lot of these you could also use in other writing. But as for this, mm, it was great. When it comes to mm, it left a lot to be desired. As far as the mm, is concerned, uh, it sets the standard for or it sets the benchmark for whatever. On top of that, plus what's more, or on the flip side, to give you a little, a little more interesting way of saying, however, on the flip side, this left a lot to be desired. This wasn't up to standard. This was somewhat disappointing and so on. Finally, well, I don't think quite finally, but we're getting there. In your conclusion, you'll make a recommendation with expressions like highly, strongly recommend, catching or giving something a try. Just to vary it from reading or watching, you can catch something instead of watch it, you can give something a try. Or you certainly wouldn't recommend, you can strongly advise someone to watch or not watch. You should do it, it's not to be missed, or it is, you can give it a miss and you can not bother doing it. Or we can talk about how it's a classic, it's a hit, a bestseller, a must see, all these typical review expressions that could be very useful. So going back to your homework, your Christmas task, writing about a magical Christmassy place, how exactly would we plan this? What do we need to keep in mind before you do it for your homework? Well, the structure, the plan, we need a catchy title, something about a winter wonderland being transported to a childhood, a state of fantasy. You get the idea I'm going with. You can do better than that, but write a catchy, clear title. An introduction, like we talked about with a rhetorical question, with some kind of fact or personal touch of when you went there to generate interest. And then a paragraph on what makes it magical. This better be interesting. This better not just be, there was some snow and I had some chocolate. Oh, wow. No, it needs to be magical. It needs to be impressive. And number four. This is another little trick that I, I swear they put these in the exam to make sure you are reading the question and thinking about the question carefully. In the question it says, what's the best way to get there? And when some of my students did this, they said, let's go to New York for Christmas. I recommend taking a plane. Oh, really? I was going to swim. Thank, thank God you told me to take a plane. It's a bit obvious. And you don't read a review of a concert in New York that says you should probably go there by plane if you're going from Europe. No review is going to say that. What, is, what does this point really mean? Well, it means how you are traveling when you're there. Maybe it means avoiding traffic or something, but it doesn't mean get a plane, get a boat, use a car. I think it's how do you going to make it interesting talking about how to get there? Well, if you're traveling, you know, if, if you're going to New York, then let's make sure you go through a walk through the streets of Brooklyn, looking at the Christmas lights at night. If you're going to uh, Germany, where they have all the Christmas markets, make sure you take a walk through the snowy Black Forest with the magical Hansel and Gretel atmosphere. This is how you're getting there, but we're making it interesting for a review. And then finally, in your conclusion, you say who should visit. Make sure you're specific, as I said before. So that's your homework. Please write a, a nice review for me or for someone. And if you want to send it to me, then feel free to send it to me. My address is number 12 Candy Cane Lane, North Pole, or send it to your teacher. Maybe that would be more effective. Check it yourself, edit it yourself, like I always say with these things. But that's the review. I hope that's helpful. See you next time.